You're on television tonight. Mm. Uh-oh. Oh, there here we go. So you're going to have to. Yeah. Like I thought it was a joke. No. So that says on air, you're really recording. Yeah, you are being recorded right now. Uh, good evening. My name is George Morris. I'm the vice chair of the planning board. And this is the opening of the uh, February 3rd meeting. Uh, and we introduce the people around the table, starting first with our associate member. Pete Pecos. John O'Connell. Jim Robinson. And Martha Taylor, town planner. Very good. Uh, the first item on the agenda were minutes uh, for January 6 and January 20. Unfortunately, they are not ready yet, so they'll be taken up at another meeting uh, for review. And you are ready, right? Uh, if you can come up to the microphone, actually, you can bring that over a little bit. There's a microphone over on the side. Good evening. Thank you. Um, my name is Chris Horan. Um, I reside at 11 Lund Street in Byfield, which is, I'm a direct abutter to this uh, right. current property. And I did over the uh, Yellow School as you guys probably know. So this is sort of in continuation of that, um, sort of defining and delineating that whole Byfield Village District. Uh, it's currently uh, a Methodist church. It went out of business November 2014. Uh, and um, what you have in front of you is a proposal to convert it to four townhouse-style condominiums, um, each three bedrooms, two and a half bathrooms, uh, roughly 20. 2,600 square feet includes three floors. The ground level, which it currently is um, a livable space, the first level, and then a proposed second level. There is a part of a second level to it, but we would, we'd put another floor in, in sort of that main church uh, cavity area. Hence the, the new roof lines on the second floor. So um, we have a rendering there, um, a detailed site plan. Uh, we need three approvals for this. Um, because it's in the water overlay district, we need a special permit from the Board of Selectmen. Um, because we're converting it to a four unit building and we're increasing or renovating or adding more than 1,000 square feet, we need a special permit from the Planning Board and a site review. Okay. Um, and all the documentation is there and I've already uh, met with the Selectmen briefly and gave them everything to submit for the overlay approval. Um, there's floor plans, elevations, a landscape plan as well. Um, trying to keep neutral colors, maintain a lot of open space, especially in the back. Um, there's a proposed, as far as new structures above and beyond what's actually existing, on the fork, on the front, uh, there was a one-story addition that we're proposing to increase to a two-story addition and stretching it out a little bit more. I think the incremental difference was about 250 or 300 square feet. Mm -hmm. And then the two two car garages, roughly 24 by two. I think one's 22 <coughs> by 24 and one's 24 by 24. So we're not adding a lot. We're we're using primarily the existing footprint, mm -hmm. and we're introducing a lot more, as you can see on the landscape plan, a lot more trees. Um, all the lighting, um, Martha. I sent you an email. I don't know if you got this. I saw that. Yeah, yep, thank I'll, you. I'm getting a plan for that, but it's all going to be <coughs> down lighting. There's no. Um, floodlights, you know, beaming from the top. Um, that's a fairly busy area, as you it know. Is. So right. there's car. I mean, my main concern is not our lighting, but it's cars. I mean, if, if you're standing in the building, those cars are coming down from the highway on Central Street. I mean, it's pretty. But they go fast. They go fast too. <laughs> <laughs> Hence the. Uh, if you notice on the on the Central Street side, um, we are proposing a, a eight foot fence there. It's probably going to be seven and a half to eight feet, only mm -hmm. because it's so busy and so we're just trying to provide some protection there from from the activity, the noise, the lights. On the back side, we we toned it down to a five foot uh, picket oh, fence see. to try to sort of keep you know, maintain more of the residential feel. Um, and the colors you're seeing there will, will actually be the colors um, for the exterior. We're, we're primary clapboard, but on the peaks on the gables um, throughout. Consistently we're doing decorative shingles in a different color just to add a little more detail. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Very good. Uh, since this is the subject of a special permit, we really can't discuss it too much sure. tonight or ask many questions. Absolutely. But we are having a joint meeting with the Board of Selectmen on 
Um, they voted to hold it on March 8th, which is their night, and we had discussed that sort of in advance right. um, at 7.15. So um, the planning board <clears throat> does need to vote to accept the plan and um, schedule the public hearing. Um, I guess my question, since Elizabeth actually isn't here yet and John has recused <coughs> himself, whether um, because this involves a special permit, whether right. you can, uh, can call Pete to the table, so to speak, or wait until Elizabeth gets here and take the vote? We're going to wait for Elizabeth. Okay. I think we have to. But she should be along shortly. Okay. Sit down and relax. <laughs> okay. And I appreciate you accommodating, you know, meeting with the selectmen. That's helpful. Thank you. Yeah, that is helpful for us, too. Makes it very efficient. Right. So we will, um, what we'll do is put together a notice that um, basically references all three hearings on that date and at that time, and, and we'll get you that language. It needs to be published in the paper twice. Um, so the dates of publication will be on there. We'll, we'll help coordinate that with you. Yeah, through that, I'll yeah we can. You do, I'll do we can do that, and then the uh, a butter notification needs to go out. But this, you know, this at least keeps it to one notification instead of three. Yeah, I appreciate that. <laughs> So, and I have, um, you know, I've reviewed the submittal for completeness, not for technical review. That will happen. Um, because it's in the water supply protection overlay district, there is some storm water, um, some roof infiltration. Mm -hmm. um, there's not a lot going on there. I don't know whether the board feels that there would be any need for, you know, engineering review. Um, it's, it seems pretty straightforward. Um, and with the storm drainage and all, the, we're making it better than it actually is. Yeah. Right. The uh, yeah, the post development is going to be much improved from the pre development. Um, you know, Do you have a recommendation on that? Um, my own feeling is that it's probably simple enough that mm -hmm. I don't think we need. You know, we're not we're not looking at a lot of um, grading changes or anything like that. Um, it's basically <coughs> going to be, you know, Caltech cult structure to take the, the roof infiltration. Um. John, do you have any comments on the stormwater issues, if any? The stormwater issues on the site? Yes. I have not looked at the site plan in any detail okay. as yet. Um, I probably will have some thoughts when I say it. Uh, who's who's your Steve, guy? Steve Sawyer? Oh, from, Steve, from yeah. DCI. Yeah, that's great. Right. He will be at the meeting on the 18th. He just confirmed. Yeah. So, any questions you have for him? So you, you have a you have a, he has put together a oh, site plan now. Okay. It's very it's detailed. In that package. Yeah, I'll be glad to have a look at it. Okay. Say what I think. I I don't know to what extent I can participate <clears throat> in this, but I'll be glad to say something. And we may want to have. Uh, do we want to have Joe have a look at this? Is this well, that, that's the question. Yeah, we were whether about that. No. I, you think Joe ought to take a look at it? I don't know. I haven't seen it. Yeah. It's a pretty small, pretty small job. I can't, you know, Steve knows what he's doing for right. one thing. And secondly, it's a small job, and I can't see anything he's doing. If he did nothing at all, there'd be no harm done. Yeah. So anything at all is good. And Does we'll he put some, some uh, yeah, as Martha best said. management practices in, yeah. into it? Yeah. yeah. I think we'll pass on that. Yeah, I I, th I think given the the nature and size of the project, I think that's okay. I think it's enough not to take a look at it. Yeah, we're I good. We're I, good. I appreciate that. And then traffic flow, he did a he did a uh, analysis on that as well. And again, it's it's a mm -hmm. mitigating the uh, what's currently there. You don't have to stay in there. You can come sit down. Oh. <laughs> so if, if we have <laughs> questions, then should we hold them <coughs> off to March eighth? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We really can't get into a uh, comprehensive discussion here. And Martha and I have been in discussions for, it seems like two months now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> forever. <laughs> yeah, she's been very helpful in giving recommendations. So we've, we've added a lot of this hopefully out. So. Well, as an aside, you did a really nice job with the uh, yellow school. Well, thank you very much. It's, it's, yeah. Every time I drive by, I said, that's a nice job. It had more trees. I don't know if you saw that. Oh, yeah. 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 It did. About 17 of them. <laughs> yeah. I live in Knob Hill, so I go by that every day. Oh, do you? A couple of times, yeah. We, we love living. It's fantastic. It's so it's such a great community, it really is. You're close to everything. Yeah. It's quiet. It's, when you're inside that house, you don't hear much. It's yeah. nice. Oh, I bet you don't. The walls are thick. Yeah. 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 I, I got a question just out of curiosity. Sure. I know you have city water. You have sewer? But, um, this new site? Yeah. No, it's going to be a, a private septic. Okay. We've already done the perk test. 
the leaching field is going to be It'll here, be and yeah. then the reserve. Okay. okay. It all worked out well, and, and okay. everything that went out there and looked at it so far, it looks really good. Excellent. So there'll be one system for the four units. I think it's a 3,000 gallon tank. Mm -hmm. Well, two tanks, but yeah. Right. So, so far, that looks good. We'll have to bring in a bigger water line, I'm sure. I think it's a, probably an inch line coming in now. Only an inch? I think so. Yeah. yeah well, that's, that's what Dan said. Mm -hmm. So you've talked, you have talked to them about that. I do. Yeah. It would remain in the same location. He says it's, it's easy to do, but we'll, we'll, I'll have my former size, size it up. But I imagine I'll have to increase it. Mm -hmm. um, and there's gas, which I'd like to bring in like I did with my house, this natural gas right on Central Street. Mm -hmm. I was lucky because it stopped pretty much where the yellow school ended. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. It, it didn't go much further. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it stops right around there, right after Lone Street. So. What do you use, Jim? Propane? Long story. We had natural gas. You had natural gas. Where okay. were you? Uh, Knob Hill subdivision. Oh, sure. You have natural gas there? There are two houses there that have it. How do you? It was, it was just on Main Street? No, it comes in from River Street there. Oh. Oh, you lucked out? Yeah. As I did. Yeah. yeah. What's the big difference? We, uh, the way the story goes, well, I don't know where in the. <laughs> No, you're on air. <laughs> anyway, it happened. Yeah, there, there's a, there's one line that went to one house, and we were able to tap into it to make two houses now. Right. Right. Are there any stories at all? Uh, no, I don't know if we want to, um, you know, just come back to this um, when Elizabeth gets here. Okay. Um, why don't we do that? Yeah. And move on to whatever else we have. Yeah, I mean, the next was Chrissy, and she's not here yet either. Um, so, um, uh, do you want to move on to the, the next item? Subdivision rules and regulations? Yeah. yeah. We got to have John come up. Excuse me, John. Could you come up here? Sorry. Please, I, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> sorry, we talking to my talk client. <laughs> I'll, 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 we'll talk in the morning, yeah. Uh, Try me. It's going to be one of those days. No, it's Russian we'll roulette. try to do it the easy way first. It's Russian roulette. Yes, sure. tomorrow. Nothing urgent. <clears throat> That's good. I like those. John, with some effort, I read the rules and regulations. Did you? Subdivision. Yes, good. With some effort. Oh. And I will have some comments after I compare it to the law. Okay. But good. I don't know whether you've had a chance to read them. Yeah. Um, Peter? I've looked. Yes. You look. Okay. Yeah. Does anybody have questions of me at this point? Not at this point. Do you have anything you want to say about them? Any, anything well, I, I would make the comment that uh, Joe came back with about two pages mm -hmm. of issues. Um, some of them I think he's right. Some I had already found that I'd missed on the first go okay. round, like the, the percentage slope of the road. Two percent is more than you want to have. One percent mm -hmm. is, is industry standard. Um, some of the things, I got the impression that Joe just didn't really understand where we were coming from. And if he didn't understand, we got to clean it up. Because if, of all people in town, if he, he should understand it. Um, so I think what I'm going to want to do over the next two weeks before the next meeting is try to get with Joe, talk with him, and get his thoughts and see if we can put together some, for those things that are, that are right, but the way they're put, the language is perhaps misleading. Uh, get, get it so it's not misleading. Mm -hmm. Does that suit everybody? That's fine. We get to the point where Joe and I are both happy. And I don't get, really disagree with anything he said. I think that in some cases he didn't understand what we were trying to accomplish. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot had to do with uh, trees, saving trees, six inch caliper and larger. Nobody planned on counting every six inch tree. The idea was typically they would stake the rough stake the road and if we saw something really nice, tie a ribbon around it. Okay, you mentioned six inch caliper. I did notice one section mentioned trees at six inch diameter. Oh, maybe I said diam. Maybe yeah, I said you use did. the wrong word. I, I think can't you remember want to use I, caliper. I don't remember what they say. Yeah. Yeah, so, you know. 
Yeah, six inch diameter is pretty In small. In any event, <laughs> that saving trees, but uh, large trees is not a bad idea, but turning it into a real problem is a bad idea. Right. So that suit everybody? Yeah, I had a question yeah. for you. What's the significance of the yellow? You know, we got the we got the red. I understand what that is. Actually, I forgot. I'm sorry. <laughs> Something is highlighted in yellow. What does that mean? That it's Martha, Martha did it. What? Which yellow versus the red? Yeah. What's yellow oh. versus red? Um, yellow. Um, I highlighted in yellow some some things that when and when we've been going through it, there were still some questions that needed to be resolved. So it's sort of like you know, please pay particular attention yeah, to this because um, we need to to discuss it further right, yeah. so okay. that was um, and just I have um, I've sent it out to you know all the relevant department yeah. heads and so on in town um, as well as to Ginny um, Kramer for her review and I also was talking to Joe Cosgrove at the MVPC meeting yeah. today, and we got into a discussion about subdivision regulations. Yep. And so um, I'm going to send it to Is him. Good? Oh, good. I'm going to yeah. send it to him and Tony for review as well. Tony as well. That's yeah. fine. Yeah. yeah. He's a road guy. Yeah, because we were talking about complete streets and, yep. and oh, yeah. all of that That was stuff. a big thing at today's yeah. meeting. Yeah. So, um, and I've requested comments back from everybody um, on the 16th of February. So okay. then we can try to kind of compile them in some rational fashion so that yeah. we can then discuss them. And still aiming to have a public hearing in April at the latest. Yeah. Um, James has already read it. I had, or he, he didn't read the whole thing. He read what, read what I had outlined for him that he cared about. I didn't want to make him read all well, 40 or 50 pages, but the stuff that had to do with him, he's okay. Uh, some of Joe's comments had to do with feedback we've had from the fire department in the past and the highway. Um, they may look excessive, but this is what the fire department wants. And I was brought up that those guys get what they want. You know, I'm not going to argue with a fire truck. You know? <laughs> <laughs> um, did you have any questions on, we're talking subdivision rules and regs, you got questions? Do we want to deal with this now? We're in between hearings, uh, appearances. Why don't we have Elizabeth sit down and we'll just let you know what's going on so far and we'll get along with Chris's application acceptance. Okay, so we, we talk about rules and regs later. We'll, we'll pick Good. that up again. Yeah, <clears throat> okay. Hi. Hi, Elizabeth. <clears throat> Chris Horan was here before you got here, obviously, and he gave us presentation okay. uh, concerning the site plan review, not site plan review, yeah. Yep, site plan and special, and special permit, permit applications. Uh, these are not items that we can discuss deeply tonight, mm -hmm. and we didn't, only because it would be subject to a, an open hearing, public hearing with the Board of Selectmen on the 8th. Of March at 7:15. At 7:15. So um, we're glad you're here, so we can go ahead and vote on this. Unless you have some questions. We're voting to just accept the application, right? Yes, yep. that's correct. And set, and set the it's public hearing date. As right. much as I'd like to accept that, I don't think. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Thank you. You're accepting, but. And I even have it on my calendar. <laughs> Not worth going to jail for. <laughs> so James, would you make a uh, motion? Yes. I move to accept the special permit and site plan review applications for redevelopment of 11 Central Street. Second. Second. Now there's another motion for the public hearing. How do you want that frame, Martha? Um, just. Um, move to um, set the public hearing date for March 8th at As a joint hearing with the Board of Selectmen. Yeah. Okay. Elizabeth, you want to do that? I will do this one. I move to set the hearing date for this matter to March 8th at 7.15 before a joint meeting of the Board of Selectmen and this planning board. Okay, we'll vote on the first motion. Any discussion? Second? Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. All right. And now for the second motion. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Excuse me, second? Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Thank you very much. Thanks again for coming in. You're welcome. You we'll see you on the 8th. <laughs> Thank you very much. You all set that? Thing? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Chris. Chrissy. Hi. Hi. Can I come sit up there? 
Sure. Actually, you need to, well, you'll oh, need to. Oh, that's right. You to have to be near the microphone, but you can bring that over a little bit. Oh, I can give one more. Uh, yeah, we have a spare mic we can use here. We could do that, too, if you want. <clears throat> Hello. My name is Chrissy Brown. My husband and I own um, Parkway Natural Learning Center, and we live on the property at 6769 New Bridgeport Turnpike. Um, we went through a site plan review process a couple of years ago, and as part of that process, Excuse me, Christy, would yes. you mind speaking up? Because I'm, sure. I'm like a fence post. I'm this getting really not hard. one this word. Right. No. This it's does a, not magnify in the okay. room. Then I'll just use my big so, yeah. 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 yeah, just speak up. That doesn't mag yeah. doesn't okay. microphone. That's for TV only. Yeah. As far as as part of the first site plan review, we had gotten approval to do some work on the house that's on yep. the property, um, and we're I'm just here tonight to request an extension on the um, I don't know what you call it, but this, the approval for that site plan review. Um, we are beginning the process of putting plans together for the house um, with the goal that that work would be done on the property by September 2017. So I have a request in that we would extend that approval um, extension deadline until December of 2017 to give us a little bit of breathing room on the construction. All right, now I think um, um, here's the, the letter from Chrissy. Um, Shall I read it? Or? Yes, please. Okay. Uh, it says, Dear members of the Planning Board, we are here with uh, requesting an extension to the site plan approval granted on November 14, 2013 for the property located at 6769 Newburyport Turnpike, Newbury, Mass. We are in the planning process for additional improvements to the house, which were initially anticipated in the original approval. The proposed improvements have a completion goal date of September 1st, 2017, and as such, we request an extension of the approval through December 30th, 2017, to allow for any unexpected construction delays. And you would discuss this with Ginny in terms of the, uh, right. the original permit running right, out? Right, right. Um, Sam, Sam was in touch with, with Ginny and, and uh, responded um, that the language you know, allows the flexibility for extending, extending it. The work has been completed. The housework was, you know, part of the original approval. Yes. And so that will, you know, that will basically complete what was originally anticipated. Is a revised? Is there a revised plan that goes with this? Request? There will be. We're doing it in two steps basically because the plan isn't quite ready. It's close. it's very <laughs> close, but. Um, in you know talking about it, it seemed like first you just get the approval um, mm -hmm. extension done and then Chrissy will be back shortly okay. with um, the plans um, for okay. what they anticipate doing okay so basically I'm sorry I missed what we're, it's all about uh, I gather it's the old house to be de uh, demolished yes. and something rebuilt yes. same foundation or we larger have, footprint or what? No, smaller footprint. Smaller footprint, which okay. Pull it back off the road a little bit. Mm -hmm. Okay. More. Um, Both good things. Basically, what happened is that we planned to put an addition on the house, but once we were doing the construction on the business property, we had to pull the dirt away from the house foundation, and we just realized the entire thing is ready to collapse. Yeah. So it just needs to go. So we sure. had to modify our plan a little bit. Okay. Um, so I'll be back very soon with. So tonight you're looking for an I'm indication just of our for mood. An extension on the approval. Oh, you're looking for an extension. Oh, okay. Right, um, and just a, a a little bit more. As Chrissy said, it is within the original footprint that was approved, um, and um, we had a joint meeting with Doug and Sam about this as well. Um, and um, so they'll be submitting a request for determination to the conservation commission. Yeah. Um, as part of the process. So, because it, it again, it's within the original footprint, and disturbance will yeah. be minimal. Shouldn't be that. Shouldn't be a big deal. I wouldn't think. Anything that's not a big deal is so. It is a big deal. <laughs> <laughs> Round one almost killed me. So. I must <laughs> remember. So, and I do have some uh, language for uh, a motion to extend. Very good. I just you yeah, no, I saw that. Thank you. Did you draft it? No, I did not. <laughs> Are we ready? Yes. Based on the foregoing, I move that the planning board grant a time extension mm -hmm. for the site plan review approval 
for 6769 Newbury Pern Newburyport Turnpike to Chrissy Rupp until December 30th, 2017. Oh, okay. Sure. Second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? No. The ayes have it. Motion passed. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. So, Far simpler than I thought it was. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I know yeah. it. So, um, so basically, this will get filed with the with the town clerk, um, and. So, in terms of coming back, I met with the architect this morning. She's she's pretty much ready to pull that together. So, what are the what is the options for us coming back in with uh, the plans? Um, well, we meet. Uh, we're not sure about the next meeting. Um, whether we'll meet for the second second meeting in February or not. We're still debating that yeah, one. Yeah, that one's. Um, so, um, and we do have a public hearing scheduled for March 2nd. Unclear whether it will be continued to March 16th or another another date, but um, I don't know what would the board's pleasure be on, on that. We set a time certain for the next meeting at 7.30 rego continuation um i think it was seven i set up a seven yeah, thirty. Yeah, I, think, I think so so it could Chris there would be time ahead of time yep to take care of that at the next meeting yes uh, that no, would well be not the next the march 2nd march, march, second. march yeah. 2 does that well it doesn't work for me unfortunately doesn't, you know, okay the uh the following would be march 16th okay, that's good Back, then. We shall okay. see you then. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Hey. <coughs> May I suggest, given there's would, somebody waiting, that we take him out of his, get him out of his misery, and and uh, he's talk okay. subdivision rules after that. Is there something you would like to see the board for? No, I'm just new to town. And oh, good. Oh, okay. You're welcome. Come on, come on up, and come so you up. can <laughs> come on up front if you like. Well, I can hear you fine. Thank you. Good. <laughs> welcome to town. There's so, a seat on the planning board opening up real soon, so hey. <laughs> <laughs> so we're talking subdivision. I'm going to move around if that's okay with everybody. Yes, yeah, that's I fine. I got a fighting chance of hearing you at that point. Okay, questions. Do you realize how that roll around sounded on TV? I don't care. <laughs> I'll hear about it from my wife. <laughs> James, do you have a question? Or were you no, satisfied with that? Already answered, uh, okay. You can certainly track me down outside of planning board meetings with any further questions okay. by all means, but probably be good to hear whatever issues there are. Have you sent, Martha, did you send Joe's uh, letter to everybody? Questions. Um, I didn't because I didn't know if, uh, if you and I wanted to talk about it first so that we could, um, okay, we uh, you that. know, yeah. annotate it or I can just send it out. Okay. Which, whatever uh, you think. I think it wouldn't hurt to send it out at this point. Okay, but, I'll do that. Uh, I do think we ought to talk about it. Do you want to talk about before or after I see Joe? Um, before. Before, okay. I, I did have All one right. question just out of curiosity. The permanent signs identifying the subdivision by name, other than street signs, are prohibited. You know, that's that's yeah. a leftover, and I don't understand that either. I'm glad you brought that up. Um, I've never understood why that was a, a big deal. It might be they can't um, get tacky. something that should be subject to somebody's approval <coughs> before you just put it up yeah. at most, but well, I don't see why it's a either problem. Either do I. If you can have it after, do we do we not want signs at all? Well, we had them for Fatherland Farm. Yeah, and Somebody we drove into it, didn't they? Demolished it. Uh, one end, yes. Yeah. The other one is just rotting yeah. off. And we also had it for Caldwell Farms. Right. Okay. And Colby Village did not have it. And Livingston Lane, I think, has Livingston one as well. Livingston Lane, yeah. they do. Yeah, they do. So we want to just scrub <clears throat> that whole sentence. Um, I think it ought to be a subject to approval of the board. Yeah. You think? Yeah. Or I the think building inspector, one or the other. Yeah. Because. Uh, and we may need to modify our sign regulations right. to accommodate that. But that was why it was flagged there, because, you know, we actually have some, so yeah. it was flagged for discussion. And that is a signed bylaw, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. So we'd have to change the bylaw. 
And Martha, I'm sorry, I'm going to ask you to repeat what you were explaining when I came in. What's the significance of highlighted versus the... Um, highlighted, some of the yellow highlighted ones are things that um, were still kind of open-ended. Uh -huh. So ones that I particularly wanted to draw attention to. Um, okay. So. John, I got a technical question. Yes. Uh, in one section it mentions shall be marked with an arrow. I'm sorry? It said a plane would be marked with an arrow. Is that, and it didn't specify true or magnetic. Is it usually true? Well, if it's anything, it's both. Okay. Uh, well, does it show declination? See, see an arrow like this, you know. With the declination? Yeah. Yeah, okay. At, at the, whatever the, the magnetic variation is at that. Right. Because at another section, degrees, yeah. right, at another section it says true. So there was a little. Con I, I don't that's think why there's anything there we care about, as long as you know what it is. That's mm -hmm. the important thing. And and the other thing that's sometimes done is if there's a, if there's a plan that's been approved, mm -hmm. um, with an arrow, whatever whatever it was, then it will reference that, that arrow on a plan that is recorded. Okay. So you know that's kind of the, the in a sense, a third option. Okay. You, you, you know, if, it, if there were, if, this if there's is an addition to an existing. No, if there's, if there's a previous plan, say if you have a surveyor who is doing an, an A&R plan yeah. and going off of previous plans that yeah. have been Compiled, approved, right. compo yeah. yeah, yeah. And so if there's an arrow on that, whatever, you know, whether it was true or magnetic, yeah. then it, it references that, yeah. okay. taking it from a previous plan, yeah. so. Yeah. It's one of those things that I think we ought to have something just mm -hmm. for no other reason than, than orientation. No surveyor is going to, it's, it's un, almost unthinkable that anyone is going to use that arrow in a property survey. Mm -hmm. They will use virtually everything they can before they get into the arrow. That might be something that would settle a minor difference, right. but it's not going to be a big deal for, you know, you try to put a survey plan together so that 20 years from now, another surveyor can just go in, set up, and wham, do it. Yeah, having a true, I think, is easy because the declination changes all the time. It does. It does change. But if you've got a date, you can track back to what the, declin uh, the variation was at that point in time. Yeah, it's about 16 now. When we were young, it's it was about... It's as big as 16 degrees, yeah. When we were young, it was 12. a year. Pardon? When we were young, it was 12. Maybe 13. When you were young, it was 12. I, I remember 15 myself. Oh, do you really? No, no, no. Yeah, it, it, it does. It's like three, three minutes a year, I believe, right. is the, very, the way it varies. Good. I was told when I was young that the reason you have that is because there was a huge deposit of iron up in northern, northern Canada. Which, of course, like many things I was told in grammar school, was absolutely not true. Not true. No. There's nothing to do with attracting, being attracted by a big <laughs> right. iron. Nothing at all. So anything else on this? Peter? Peter, yeah. any, any questions? Else? James has had a look at it. At, he has it. He looked. I gave him just so I didn't waste mm -hmm. his time. I marked up all the pages that I thought he would care about. Um, and he told me today he had been through those and didn't have any Good. issues. Um, I want to be sure that Nate is okay with the numbers. The, the widths and the radii of cul de sacs mm -hmm. and such things are representative of what uh, Billy Pearson wanted mm -hmm. probably now three or four years ago. Uh, James is still okay with it because they, they both share the problem. One's got to get a ladder truck around. The other guy's got to get a large plow, and uh, same problem, similar problem. Right. Yeah. Plows do damage. Fire trucks just get stuck. Otherwise, get stuck, yeah. and that's not what you want to have when there's a fire going. Right. You don't like to get fire trucks stuck. Anything else, Jim? I ran out of time. Like, <laughs> I'm sorry. I ran out of time. In the last few pages, there's a lot of red, but I didn't, I didn't okay. get to it. So, well, I don't know. We're gonna do this. Some of that some red was else? the yeah. deletion of the stormwater <laughs> rules and regs yeah. that were in that, and they never got re removed when we did our other one. There was a minor problem some, of, yeah. of the the uh, 
required methods of calculating runoff and so forth were just way beyond wrong. Wrong didn't start to describe them. And a lot of the red uh, in the kind of at the latter section are insertions. We, we really did not have a lot covering us during the construction phase. So a lot of that really has to do with, with that phase yeah. and the changes to inspections. Yeah. And yeah. Now, do we, have we published the forms? Uh, no, that's not included here. You're, you're still working on that? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah. The other thing that I, I don't think we published is the, uh, did we publish the cross-section? Uh, yes, that's uh, inserted that in there. Yeah. That? Okay. Yeah. Because uh, Joe had some problems with that, and I get we can work that out. I'm sure. I don't think he understood that that we were trying to keep the width of the road as narrow as the fire department would let us. Yeah, I did send him an email um, saying saying that the width ha was you know essentially requested by the fire department. Yeah. And we're also trying to work in country drainage instead yeah. of. And you, you just so. ran out of space. You either, either widen the right of way or don't have any trees, or TV right. or cable or you know all of the other things that you have to make space for. You know that was another thing that I saw in there. <clears throat> it talked about municipal easements for services. Yeah. And that does not include cable. Yes. Um, that would have to be mentioned also, and for private. Was cable, that was within the right of way. I don't think we were looking for. But this is a good <laughs> point. I think you can probably educate me on this. I'm assuming that if it's in the right of way, no easements are required because the town already owns it. The easements that we were talking about were when you where you have a drainage way, a couple of ditches mm -hmm. going this way, and they got to go that way to get to the stream and stay a ditch. Now, that ditch needs to be maintained, and it really is a nuisance if one of the abutters that shared that ditch, if it runs around the property line, if one of them says, you can't come on my property. As I'm given to understand, I always thought that there was such a thing as a, an easement of necessity. So that if mm -hmm. the town had a ditch running through my property, I couldn't keep them from maintaining it. That's correct. But a recent, not at present, but an earlier town council said, no, no, no. You want to go on somebody's property, they don't want you to go on. The only way you can do it is with a court order. And that, of course, gets expensive. Yeah, it does. So it'd be better to put it in ahead of time. The easement? Yes. Of course. Yeah. That's, Would that's you why check why with Jenny on that, Martha? Uh, sure. Just to take a peek at it. What's that? I'm going to ask, I just asked Martha to check with Ginny, yeah. our town council, yeah. uh, to see if that would be important to do. My concern was cable television of any type, for example, Fios or yeah. Oh, yeah. All uh, those buried things. Comcast, yeah. Anything buried before the town owns the road, certainly, the developer and it has a private road, and he has to have easements in there. Right, right. And that, and that has been done. Like in there? The, um, I don't know that it's mentioned here, but it should, it should uh, be it if it's not. It doesn't. It just mentions municipal services. Okay. Am I right that if it's a town-owned road, not an issue? If it's a privately-owned road, it certainly is an issue because, let's say, uh, Newburyport Water needs to get at the mm -hmm. Royal Plain subdivision. They will be expected to work on their mains in there, right? Yes. Or, but I would guess I would guess I would ask if the town has any objection to a utility company putting in a private utility putting in uh, cable lines, for example. Yeah. Right. Is well, we we do require a duck bank. Oh, okay. For and and anything you can go in that power mm -hmm. cable, fire alarm, whatever, um, we do require that that power be underground. Mm -hmm. That all utilities be underground. But you raise a, a point relative to, let's say, gas. Right. Okay. It, on private property, there should be something that a dedicated easement. A dedicated. Right. Which should we, there not? Would that not be? Because we don't distinguish between town and owned roads and association owned roads, and maybe we should. Now, let's give that some consideration, I think. Yeah, let's, maybe we ought to think about that, right. especially you two that know what you're talking about on this subject. <laughs>
Assumptions are being made. <laughs> Assumptions are being made. Well, I know, but I'm trying to be polite, George. Thank you, John. Is there anything else on this? All done, John? I'm, I'm all done. It's, this is your, your session to quiz okay. me. And any comments that you have, uh, especially negative comments, I would really appreciate over the next couple of weeks. And, you know, Maz has got my phone number. If you, oh, you do, I know. Mm -hmm. I do. I may not. Sure. But by all means, get in touch with me and voice your concerns. Because, you know, we don't want to do this again. No, it would be nice to get it together. You, like you've to done a lot of work on this. Pardon me? You've done a lot of work on this over five years. And well, I did a lot of work over it over about three months, and the rest of it. It was <laughs> open five years, and yeah. Martha, thank you, too, for what you put into it. Yeah. It's been a lot. Uh, okay, then. Any okay. No other new business uh, liaison reports? Oh, Martha's wait, no, we do. Oh, do uh, we? New business, the uh, four Rolfs Oh, lane. that's right, yes. Sorry. <laughs> Can I stay here because I can hear you? Yes. That's yep. I can't even hear you mm -hmm. when I'm sitting over there. This was just on lot four or number uh, four. Uh, well, it's four Rolfs four Lane. Rolfs Lane. Uh, proposed lot line changes with 41 and 43 High Road okay. as well. Um, So, um, the plan is a little confusing as it stands right now, but um, the owner of Fort Rolfs <coughs> Lane has a parcel which basically is bounded by these two lines with Z's in them, mm -hmm. and um, he is looking to expand his parcel. Um, Mr. Faria, who, who owns parcels at uh, what is it, 41 and 43, um, is they're going to you know, do, do a lot line change between the two. Mm -hmm. He's bringing his up to conforming in all respects except for the frontage. Um, it's bounded, he's bounded by these two parcels on, on either side. So he's about seven feet short. I think he required 125 feet mm -hmm. of frontage. He's going before the ZBA on uh, the 18th for frontage variance. Okay. And um, so I, I thought I would bring this up with the board tonight to, um, you know, get some, some input to see whether the board, it, Ginny had advised that this can't come before the board for endorsement without the frontage variance because endorsements and ours are based on frontage sure. and it's too short. Um, but I think my, my personal opinion is that it's in, in the spirit of the, um, you know, the ANR, the subdivision control law. Uh, part of the reason for this is he's got a septic system easement right now on Mr. Faria's property. And so this will allow him to keep that or to do a repair or replacement of mm -hmm. the septic system all on his property instead of um, Mr. Faria's property. And he wouldn't be able to do that otherwise. So, um, and I've had discussions with um, Mr. S the owner, Mr. Signori, as well as Mark Griffin, who, the attorney who's representing yes. him. Yeah. So this is really just kind of for, you know. An it's informational, form. really. Informational. Yeah. Yeah. So we don't take a vote so in, in no, support of this there, or against it? Um, you know, there's no vote if there's any, you know, sort of strong, you know, strong vote or any opinion that I can mm -hmm. pass on to the ZBA in, in addition to my own, I guess. Um, okay. I don't see a problem with it. it. To me, it's close enough for government work. For years, we had 100 feet of frontage and nothing calamitous happened. 125 is better for a host of reasons, but what is it now, 118? Uh, that, that yeah, it's, 20, yeah. it's 26 plus 92, so. <clears throat> now, what is he adding on up here? So he's basically, he's adding on, um, just this, this piece is, here. This kind of L-shaped piece. Plus, right now there there is um, access to the property over here from Rolfs Lane. So Mr. Fari would be giving that up, and that would be oh, okay. Um, you know, that would be given over to this parcel, and there actually is access off of this for this parcel as well. Okay. I have no further questions, Elizabeth. 
tonight. So, Peter. <coughs> so the fringe is being increased or decreased? Well, it's being increased, increased. for what he has now. Okay, okay. Yeah. Yep. So, so the parcel is yeah. being made much more conforming. Yeah, okay. But it's still it's short still of short the 125. About, okay. seven, about okay. seven feet. And so in theory, what would the objection be? <laughs> That's up to the ZBA, <laughs> right? Okay. I wouldn't but see any. Okay. Uh, the only question I have is more just to ground me. Which is the property that was before us recently? Was, that was eight. Okay. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Was this the spec house? No. 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 This is this a, this is a yellow. Um, I think it's yeah. I think it's the one with the, the kind of the mansard. Yeah. Roof. Mm -hmm. Is that the one we went in? No, no, we went That's in one way down here. Yeah. Way down here. This is an existing this is an existing house, existing garage. And this garage actually originally belonged to that house, but you know, through lot line changes over the years it was kind of taken away and now it's being joined back to it. Good. So, um, you know, it's making a non conforming situation much more much, conforming. Much more conforming. Right. It's really a minor non-conformance, but the ZBA still has to finish it off. Right, right. Then we see it. Right, right. If it weren't frontage, then the board could, you know, could potentially yes. endorse it. But because right. it is frontage, it has to go through that process. Good. Okay. So. And so that's the case. Even if it's non-conforming, I mean, it's a rhetorical question because of the situation we're in. But it strikes me as interesting that you're increasing it and it still has to go before it. Right, and, and the issue the issue is, um, you know, right now he's got a grand, he's grandfather, he's a legal pre-existing non-conforming, yeah. but as soon as he loses, you know, changes those lot lines, if he doesn't know that he's not, right. he loses any grandfathering, so. Got it. Good. Thank you. Thank you very so much. So if you're all comfortable, I'll just sort of pass on. Pass that board. on, yeah. Now to liaison reports, as soon as Martha finishes her note. <laughs> <laughs> Board of Selectmen, um, where do I begin? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, really, the only, um, the only thing really impacting the board was the vote that they took regarding uh, Chris's project and accepting that and setting the public hearing date. Um, and I don't, you know, I don't think there was anything else really okay. to report on. Uh, MVPC, nothing, because John is not here. Right, I mean, I can, um, I can report on a few things. We did have okay. the planning, planner's lunch today, and, um, uh, you know, various updates on things that they're doing. They're planning to have a pictometry flyover now in 2017. There weren't enough uh, communities signing on for 2016, so they'll do it in 2017 for sure. Um, they are going to roll out a, um, a revised version of my map, um, and they're going to give it to us kind of in a beta version first. Um, and I'm not sure. I'm going to check with Gerard to see whether he wants you know, um, how wide he wants that beta to be, whether I give the link to all of you and you can try it out if you want to or if, if he wants it to be a little bit more controlled. Um, uh, Betsy Goodrich, who is one of their transportation people, and I went to a training on Monday regarding complete streets. Um, it was required if we want to try to get any funding on, under the complete streets program. Mm -hmm. um, so this may be something that, that could possibly be used for um, some of the improvements that we've been talking about forever, like Byfield Village. I'm going to talk to Tracy and James and see. We can potentially get up to $450,000. Well, what's Complete Streets? Complete Streets, um, basically, Complete Streets are streets that are um, sort of multimodal in a sense that are friendly to pedestrians and bicycles and cars and you know they've got appropriate sidewalks and crosswalks and um, you know bike lanes where appropriate 
but they've come to recognize that not one size fits all. So, you know, they're recognizing that rural communities have different needs from urban communities, um, and they're not trying to force everybody to increase their width, you know, right of way to get bike lanes in and stuff like that. But, um, but it talks a lot about intersection improvements similar to what we had designed for, for Byfield um, and, uh, you know, things like that. So. Um, uh, and that was being talked about this morning too. Yeah, the yeah, right. Tony spoke for a, a while. Right, and uh, they also did hand out a flyer. They do their own sort of citizen planner training program. There's a certification that um, new planning board or conservation commission members may be interested in doing. And I will um, scan that. Um, flyer and send it out to everybody. It's $100 and um, it, it's really kind of some, some basics like what the different roles are of the different boards in town um, and some, some other things. But I, a former member, Linda McCammick, went through it a few years ago and I think found it quite useful. So I'll send that information out. Good. John, Conservation Commission? Uh, nothing much really. Uh, we meet a couple of weeks from now, next meeting there'll probably be something to say, but I can't remember anything of, of earth-shaking importance. Okay. Um, That's it? That's Good. it for me. Uh, so on that subject, though, uh, you guys need to be thinking about uh, who wants to replace me on mm -hmm. the CONCOM as the, as the uh, planning board representative. Right. Uh, it's my intent, if there's no room, I'm going to resign the Conservation Commission. We always have more, usually have fewer people in this than is constituted. Right. I just as soon stay on, um, but not at the expense of being any kind of an issue. If we, if we need to, to jam a, a planning board member in there, I will leave. Okay. So. Further yeah. discussion. Yeah, because there does have to be a planning board member right. as a voting member. Yeah, that's the a requirement. There has to be one of you for right uh, on the on the concom. Well, I know you're very valuable to the board. Oh yeah, really? Yeah. Oh yeah, sure. That's what they <laughs> tell me all the time. <laughs> no, I'm not valuable at all. Yes, you I are. I might have some slight value if we didn't have Doug, but Doug is. Mm -hmm. We are very very fortunate to have yeah, Doug. Yeah, we are. Leading that charge, he's terrific. Okay, and the zoning board. Great meeting too. Zoning Board of Appeals, uh, there's an ongoing matter on 27 Northern Boulevard, and I understand there are three new assess, assess, uh, accessory apartment applications. Um, well, I know there's one on Fatherland Drive. Right. Um, what were the other two items? I don't, I don't remember what the other two items are. I don't remember what the are. other was, too. I thought there was one other additional accessory apartment. Yeah, I, I honestly don't remember, but they're going to have a full agenda on the 18th. Right. More to follow, then. Uh, anything else from anybody else? Um, actually, on, on the ZBA, I did mm -hmm. um, contact Susan to see if we can find a time for a joint meeting. Yes. Um, and I did say to her, and I've discussed it with Sam, that you know the likelihood of having anything for this town meeting is very small at this point, especially because town meeting is a month earlier. Um, there were some housekeeping items that Sam had, but you know nothing that he feels can't wait until the fall. Okay. Um, and uh, but we'll you know we'll see what um, what the ZBA has on their mind. But I didn't hear back, so um, I, I I don't have any dates to propose to anybody at this point. Thank you. Do we want to talk about the issue we were talking about tomorrow, or in your judgment, should we not? Um, I, yesterday, it, I mean, uh, this morning. This morning. Um, your call. Yeah. No. Well, I'll just. Um, I think we had mentioned to the to the board a while while back that um, there was um, some concern on on the part of Bill DeFrancesco um, mm -hmm. at Sled Road about inspections. Um, there's a little bit of disconnect between what his expectations were. He thought that the inspections were going to be limited to um, just the constructed wetland, and the board had left it more open ended than that. Um, and the last time the board discussed it, um, I think the consensus was to kind of leave it up to, to John and me as to, to mm -hmm. what you all felt was 
or you know what we felt was appropriate. Um, Which is basically what we did. Right. And now there's another chapter been initiated. Right. So um, so you know we had we had talked um, with each other and also with our engineer Joe Sawatka about at least inspecting the you know the grading when it's when it comes time to, to paving. Mm -hmm. But I think there is still, you know, kind of continuing dis disconnect um, about that, and I don't know. I'll, I'll turn it over I to think, you. You know, I think it should be emphasized that it's one of those unfortunate situations where you have two parties, each of extremely goodwill, mm -hmm. okay, that for whatever reason are not getting it, okay, um, and I think um, I had emphasized a bill that the other day when Martha and I were out there that, um, you know, ran through all of the reasons mm -hmm. uh, and that he's really not in a position to be telling the planning board how to be a planning board. Right. You know, uh, it's, it is definitely our call. Uh, his point is that they're doing a great job, which they appear to be already. Uh, I'm kind of tied into that professionally through associations. Uh, his father-in-law's company, and now his son, and his brother-in-law's, uh, one of his brother-in-law's companies, uh, have been a client of mine for about 30 years. Mm -hmm. uh, I know those people. I know that his soils engineer is the only guy I've ever seen in that particular position that went and hired a soils engineer. And uh, I mean, I wouldn't have done that. <laughs> you know, so I, I credit him for being serious about what he's doing, and he did. I thought a quite a nice job with the what. Joe was originally tasked with uh, inspecting. Um, I can understand why he feels, hey, I'm doing this, I'm doing everything right, why should I have to pay? That's very understandable. Mm -hmm. um, the flip side is that when they were before us, you probably still probably remember, but you would, yes. uh, I raised the issue of two issues. Uh, both of which saved a significant amount of money. Mm -hmm. I reminded them that they didn't need to have four foot sumps, uh, which given the fact they're in ledge, that made a difference yeah. to their lives. Right. That probably saved them more money than Joe could possibly cost. And I said, you know, I, since we're headed towards, on the subdivision rules and regs, going from four inch required pavement to three, right. uh, what the heck, you know, go ahead and, uh, um, use the three, the board mm -hmm. bought it, and uh, that saved him, I think, somewhere close to 15 grand. And that Joe's bill is in the two or three grand range. So, you know, come on. Well, I think this is something that probably calls for continuing dialogue. Yeah. Yeah. I think periodically, yeah. Joe and Bill and you yeah. and Martha. Yeah. I, I think it's important mm -hmm. that the planning board be aware of this. Right. I'm getting a little uncomfortable. I mean, I appreciate you giving us the the green light to do what we see fit, but the guy is, um, he's a citizen, he's a voter, he's a property owner now, and he's going to be a major property owner when he finishes this stuff right. thing. And I think you know, we, we owe him the courtesy of treating it seriously and not just yeah. have, you know, us little guys dealing with it. Sorry, Martha. <laughs> the whole board. <laughs> Yeah, I was going to say, would it make some sense to have, invite him to come in to make what, a little present? That? Should it make, have him come in to make a nice presentation to us or you want, you raise like questions that? for the board? Um, I mean, we could do that. Um, he could also, I mean, he, he's made a lot of progress when John and I were out there. The foundations are in for, yeah. for yeah, the first two buildings. Uh, is mo you know, moving along so quite, have a site quite view, nicely. For example, go out and talk with them. Um, so it could do that because um, I think John and I are the only ones who have actually been on I on think site. So, yeah, um, he he would really <clears throat> like to have everybody out. He is legitimately quite proud of what he's done out oh, there. Oh, it looks wonderful. And the other thing is that was there were several nasty shocks to him. There were way more leads than he thought. Ledge. And he found so much I had forgotten about. Martha reminded me he, he found a lot of buried stuff. I mean, it was a junkyard on the surface. Uh, when you stuck a backhoe in it, it got worse. <laughs> so <laughs> it, it was a, he's, he's had more than his share of bad luck out there. Yeah, let's do a site visit. I'd, right. like, to do, I'd like to do a site visit. That'd be, site visit, yeah. Because yeah. I know. Yeah. Before the snow flies. Like, yeah. <laughs> Friday. <laughs> 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 This is the first day of, of, yesterday was the first day of spring in Ireland. Yes. 
Yeah. <laughs> Feast of St. Bridget. Really? Fela Bridget. Mm. Feast of St. Bridget is uh, mm. when spring starts. It's a spring okay. festival. Wow. Early in Ireland. Thank goodness for the Gulf Stream, you know? Yes. It goes right in there, doesn't it? It does. Yeah. It slams right up against County Cork. Yeah. So, um, well, I could contact Bill to see what we can set up. Um, yeah. And would it be nice uh, to review what he's done, and, and we'll take care of any questions he might have yeah. over there. You can post it as a meeting if you want. Um, yeah, probably it would be good to yeah. do that. I guess the question is, is when. Um, oh, just set yeah. up a date before the snow flies. <laughs> yeah. I, I would think the sooner the better. Probably. Um, uh, yeah, I don't. I don't want to let this. This has been going on long mm -hmm. enough at this point. You, these things don't get better with age. Um, the other thing is, uh, I had, without knowing particularly what I was talking about, just voiced the opinion that if in the future somebody buys this and he finds finds some nasty surprises that could have been caught if mm -hmm. the planning board were really paying attention. And we had the right to inspect. We did not take the trouble to see if, he, if any developer was doing what he said he was going to on his plan, mm -hmm. that the town could have some liability. And I, I know the town could have definitely have some embarrassment, whether we have liability or not. Do you mm -hmm. have any thoughts on that you want to share? Or? Not at this point. Okay, I suggested to Martha that she grab Ginny sometime on the fly and Good. see what Ginny's, does that make sense? Yes, uh, much better with Ginny. Get Ginny's opinion. No, I right. can appreciate why you didn't want to hmm. play town council. Can't do it. That's why we, that's why we pay, pay for the big bucks. Right. And the other thing that this has pointed up, um, which we should make sure we, we include in the uh, site plan review regulations, which I'd like to actually bring back to the board and have a public hearing on the same night we do the subdivision rules and regulations, oh, okay. um, is we should require a pre-construction conference yeah. um, so that everybody is on the same page going forward. Yeah, right. you know, we didn't have that this time, and I think that, yeah. We did know, that. We did that as a matter of course. Mm -hmm. uh, and we made the point to the developer that if the contractor was doing the right thing and we got to trust him, his bill from us would be substantially lower. If we didn't dare turn our back on him, then we would be spending more time mm -hmm. and he would be paying us more money. And developers tend to understand, anybody understands yeah. that language. <laughs> and so Dolphin beats up on his contractor to, you know, so pre-construction is very valuable. Yeah, it is, yeah. It is yeah. important. It really is. You know, we've got a bit of a learning curve here. We haven't had inspections on site plan review before, but I think that, um, you know, given the complexities of stormwater in particular, I yeah. think that it's it's yeah. it really is something that, would, except for very simple projects, we sh we should probably be considering. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We uh, we never did until about maybe five years or so back, we, uh, Amesbury and Ipswich started to ask us to uh, enforce site, site, site plan review drawings, mm -hmm. uh, which we never did before. For years, we, uh, we just did subdivisions, and every town we work with, six or seven of them through the years, uh, said, hey, site plan review is your business, not ours. And then I don't know what triggered it, but Amesbury and Ipswich, both of which are, you know, fairly organized. Right. Uh, they're bigger communities than we are by far. They started asking us to do site plan things as well. So clearly, it's not a brand new thing. We was we started doing this about five, five, no, well, probably more than five or six years ago. I was a one-man band when I joined the planning board. Mm -hmm. wasn't I? Yeah. yeah. So it was seven or eight you years were. ago. Right. But me. You were. Yeah. Yeah. We had a real company once when I was young and good looking. <laughs> Martha, let me ask you, can we have a workshop without having a meeting per se to discuss uh, some of the <clears> things <throat> like this or do we have to leave it as a meeting? It has to be. Discuss? I think if there's a quorum of the board, it really has okay. to be a meeting. Okay. Hmm. There we go. Well, that's the answer. Me? Which I, that was the answer, and I thought that was going to be the answer. But you workshop, workshops would be nice, but I thought 
Martha's yeah. answer was going to be that answer. Can you imagine a private company um, being managed by a bunch of people that had to tell everybody in the world what was going on? I don't even want to go there. <laughs> <laughs> no, private companies don't have to, obviously, no, and they don't want to. Well, why would generally? Right. No way to run a railroad. Anything else to bring before the board? Um, I've got just um, just kind of an FYI. We have um, received another um, notice of intent to sell a property that's currently in 61A. Um, and this one is at 323R High Road. So it's right sort of at the, the southern end of Newbury Neck on the east side of High Road. Uh, it's actually property owned by Joe Story. And um, right at the point, it's it's yeah, kind of right at the point. It's right. right your um, home has the old store in it. Uh, no, there's no no. It's oh, on it's the it's on now. the other it's on the other side. I don't know if you remember. Um, oh, it's on the. It's on the east side. On the east side, yeah. yeah. There's a store there right at the corner. Or it used to be a store. It looked kind of looks like a a store turned into a house. Yeah, and this one actually doesn't have any frontage on High Road. Oh, okay. Um, well, it's, an, it's, it, it, it's, 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 it's really, his it's his mother's place, I think, or it's not his mother's, yeah. but his aunt's place. Yeah. But, uh, What's the address? Where is uh, it It's now? 323 R 23. High Road. Um, so um, the selectman will be setting a public hearing date as soon as that's done. I think next, it'll be on their agenda for next Tuesday to set the public hearing date. Um, and as soon as that happens, then um, they'll be asking all the you know boards and commissions mm -hmm. for their for their input on the parcel. And is it a sale, or is, does the current owner want to take it? Out of no, system? it's a sale. Yeah. So, and if how large a piece is that? It is. Um, It's 13.38 acres, more or less, <laughs> uh, shown as lot 18 on assessor's map R05. And uh, there is a PNS here. Um, and um, The purchase price is seventy-five thousand dollars for thirteen acres. Right, but it's it's yeah, and it's um, I think it's Bob Britton. Is there any wetland involved? It's all wetland. All wetland. Okay, according to according to the um, the assessor's maps, anyway. That explains the price. Yeah. So I don't um, I, I don't have any information on what the uh, you know wh wh what the intention may be. So Do they uh, have to say though as part of the sixty one A process. Um, it may be there. Just, yeah, yeah, it may. I, I I actually haven't gone through this yet, and this is really just FYI that it's going to be coming. Okay, good. good. Um, the uh, I think the board. Selectmen have until May 20th, I think, to either exercise their right of first refusal or assign it or waive it. Okay. And then, Martha, I don't know if this is something that um, can be discussed now, but what happened to the other parcel that you had mentioned at one point that the, the, the Ginny didn't think the notice was sufficient, but there was some dispute by the property owner? Um, Right, and um, the PNS has basically expired. So, um, you know, as far as the town is concerned, there is still no no proper notice, so no action can be taken. Okay. Anything else? And I do have an announcement. Um, after years of loyal being behind the door, um, Steve is. Uh, <laughs> has decided that he would like to um, move on to other things. And so uh, Caleb asked me to announce that we will be looking for somebody to film the planning board meetings on the first and third Wednesday of every month. 
So um, if anybody's... John, there you go. <laughs> you can still say associate with the board. You can volunteer to be the person who takes care of video for the okay. planning board meetings. Martha, as <laughs> usual, I didn't hear it's, it's right. who's leaving. Steve, not? Steve, Steve, Steve is oh, leaving. He's Steve. not, yeah, oh, he's okay. not going to be filming us anymore. Yeah, I think not. Thanks. Yeah. So, um, I don't do well with things electronic. Okay. Me and electrons do not mix well at all. Okay. So anyway, if anybody out there is interested, um, please contact uh, Caleb Noble on the uh, media committee or contact the media committee. And um, good. Okay. That's Steve it. Steve is going to retire. Steve is retiring. Okay. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, Steve. <laughs> I would entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Meeting adjourned. Oh. Um, <laughs> we didn't we didn't talk about February 17th whether the board wants to meet or not I for one since it's my kids are in from California 